Hello and welcome to my review of the Sisters of Battle Junith Iruta model from Games Workshop. She will cost you £27.50 and a little bit of information that Games Workshop don't really highlight as much. And what I mean by that is anybody can go on the internet and go on the web store and have a look at one of the key features and see that she is a canoness superior of the order of our martyred lady. It also says a unique HQ choice for the Adeptus Sororitas faction, but it doesn't really marry those two points up. It doesn't make it clear that she is just for the order of our martyred lady. It says she's a canoness superior and it says she's a unique HQ choice, but if they married those two points up and put she is a unique HQ choice for the Order of Our Martyred Lady, that would be so much clearer. That she is just a unique HQ choice for the specific Order of Our Martyred Lady. You can't use her for any other order, so don't try. So that puts that existence of this model in question. Space Marines have their chapters and as such have unique HQ named characters, such as the very recent Dark Angels Lazarus Primaris Captain. Sisters of Battle are no different. Instead of chapters, they have orders. And Junith Aruta is the only specific HQ choice, or the only specific model for that matter, in the Adeptus Sororitas army that is for one, say chapter, order. Celestine, you can use for any Sisters of Battle army order. So you can do for Triumph of St. Catherine, but Junith is the only one for our martyred lady. Now I hope I've made that clear enough. It doesn't say it on the box. Not everybody has access to the internet. Well, if you're watching this video, you clearly do have access to the internet, but not everybody does, and not everybody can look at the Games Workshop web store. For many reasons, people may go into the store and they may have a look at uh, this box and it doesn't say anywhere that she is just for the order. I'm hoping that the Games Workshop staff will jump to your help in the store and explain that you can only use her for one order and so you then down the path of having that order as your um, Sisters of Battle force. However, even if they don't, it's still a very cool looking model uh, and Someone asked me in the comments uh, quite a while ago, oh super, can you put a small base in there and have her as a separate canoness? I've got good news for you, fella. Oh, <laughs> you can, if you wish, clip these little pegs off, slap her onto this 25 millimeter base, and then she is good to go. She's then added a bit, a bit of height, only a little bit of height. It still doesn't look too funky, but um, it works. You, you can do that, um, by all means. You can have her on a base, on this pulpit, and have a whip around, and then when you want, pop her out, and then it just looks like she's, she's stepped, stepped down these. I mean, there's a, there's a big leap, let's face it. Even without the flying base, even there, uh, let's say it's probably a little bit higher. That is that is a leap. That is it's almost a space marine leap there. So that's a good sort of six or seven foot leap. <laughs> Scales just don't work in 40k with miniatures. They they really don't. But that's the point I'm trying to make. Is that's a, a pretty big leap there. Uh, it looks like she's got flat flat. Um, flat bottom shoes on, but still. Um, she can leap off there and then start bopping people over the head with that mace of castigation. Point I was trying to make is you can flip a 25 mil base in there if you don't want to glue her um, completely there. And then you can use her as a normal canoness. I'm not really sure which canoness you're gonna use her for because all of the weapon options don't support what she's carrying. She's carrying a mace of castigation. It's not a rod of what, office, it's not a power sword, it's not a chain sword. I don't know how you're gonna blag that one. Maybe if you, you know, somehow put some kind of chain sword in that left hand, that could work. But yeah, it's uh, gonna be a hard blag 
um, I tell you that, to have her as a separate one. Which is one of the reasons why I'm just going to glue her in there. I have no need for her to be a separate Canon S. I'm going to be buying two of the Canon, S en Canon S's anyway for the weapon options. So the once she's painted, she's just going to glue directly into there, much like the Triumph of St. Catherine model. Anyway, enough about me rambling on about the amazing... Uh, uh, option of having a on a 25mm base. Great that Games Workshop did that. Great that it's sort of an option as well, if that makes sense. Um, so she can just be on a, a little base. She does look a bit odd on a small 25mm base, but because she's so tall. Anyway, you get a couple of base options. Speaking of base options, well, yeah, this kit is all about base options. Anyway, you get this large, I think it's a 50mm base. It's the same size base as a Hospitala model. Uh, you just chop off the uh, bottom of the flying stand and then slot that in there. Oh, it slots in nice and smoothly and snugly, and uh, you can have a flying around on that. Alternatively, it does come with a flying stand. Alternatively, it comes with another flying stand and the flying base. Again, oh, feels so good. Um, that fits in there. It, it depends really whether you want a big one or a small one. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a look at the model herself, look at the details. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, you, you don't get one of these bases. It's not, it's not a box full of bases. You're going to have to find a 25mm base um, separately from somewhere. Let's have a look at the, the details on her. Now, I've opted for the uh, hooded version. I don't actually know where her spare head has got to. It's so ugly that it's rolled away. Um, but, you know, but you know the, the head I'm talking about. Uh, this one right here. Oh really wide-eyed horrible haircut just disgusting um so that's the only spare part you get is just a different um head i much prefer this one with the hood because uh, then at least even though the hood is a, again a bit funky and um, she's got an, a a fleur de lis icon on there and it looks nice framed um, with the iron halo behind her this is that mace of um castigation uh, lovely like templar kind of cross uh, symbol She's got some uh, Fleur de Lis iconography dotted about. Um, her power plant is amazing. It's very spiky though. Um, must be a pain to uh, you know take off. Maybe she never takes it off. But I like the uh, the flame braziers. I want to call them on the top of the power plant. I don't think it helps with the heating issue. But there we go. And it, they are surrounded by mini. Fleur de Lis icons too. So that's um, her, but compared to the pulpit, it's almost like she takes second fiddle um, because this pulpit is absolutely glorious. All of these are separate. They don't show the different orders like the Triumph of St. Catherine does, but there we go. Um, the dual heavy flamers, you can't rotate them at all. It really sucks because the power cables and the um, fuel lines are connected into the pulpit itself. Uh, you've got some sisters uh, statuettes here uh, on the flanking either side and you've got these braziers with the smoke in different areas. You've got this servitor type command console thing maybe. Maybe it, hol maybe it projects some kind of hologram. I don't know but um, either way she's going to be ducking under that from fire from last cannons and all kinds of missiles and things. Horrific uh, Shredder weapons and Eldar weapons and heretic barbed cannons and skull missiles and all, all kinds of things. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's the kind of pulpit. Uh, this double-headed eagle. It's glorious. I love these cheeky little skeleton um, fellas down here. They look like they're kind of firing the heavy flamer in a way. They look like they've, they've got joysticks themselves, but they haven't. Uh, just for ornamentation sakes. So they've got a few um, purity seals and then you've got the, the names of some saints like uh, Catherine, Dominica, Arabella, uh, which is, yeah, Arctic Monkey Song. I suggest you check it out. Uh, Lucia, uh, Mina and Silvana. Uh, so yeah, really, really nice. Lots of detail. I think it's worth the £27.50. It's three sprues and it took me quite a while uh, to, to put together way more than like the Hospitala and probably the Imagifier. Um, they could have sold this at 30. I think they could. £27.50 is, is all right. I thought it was a bit expensive to begin with. Um, much like the full Redemptor kit, uh, much like the full Redemptor Dreadnought kit, but actually this is pretty good. 
Um, I really enjoyed making this and uh, the rules are, are quite decent too, of which I'll go through in a moment. So first things first, let's do some size comparisons. Oh, I don't really know how to do the size comparisons with this one. Uh, I think what I'll do is just slot her in a little place. Oh, she's wobbling all over the place, bless her. <laughs> um, let me just show, show you some size comparisons with some Sisters of Battle model, first of all. So here's the Hospitaler. Um, she might be coming up to her and uh, repairing her lost wounds, maybe. I don't know how how that would work, but yeah, she's on a bit of a wonk, but maybe that's just my odd skills. It's, it's hard to sort of, yeah, once you make her, it's hard to put her on the base without her looking at a wonk, because it's, it's so tall, the model. Um, but that's her next to a Hospitaler. Next to a, a normal Sisters of Battle, which is similar height to Hospitaler anyway. There she is, standing upright. Next to Saint Celestine, she is. Oh, that's really close, right? I think she's taller than Saint Celestine. You know, it's almost like, I'm here, my child, and she's just flying up there and, you know, giving her, giving her, her, her high five, you know, and uh, let's get back to the battle. Yeah. They do look stunning together. I mean, yeah, I prefer Celestine, obviously, but um, yeah, they, they, they work well. Uh, there is also Canoness. So you've got two named characters and the normal HQ. Oh, there's um, Amalia Novena, if you wanted to know how tall she was next to Amalia. Amalia's is like the most detailed plastic miniature I've ever seen in my life um, for just normal gray plastic. Incredible amount of detail on her. My, this is the world's worst Bookaroo model, I swear. Wow, that's difficult to manoeuvre. There you go, hopefully you can see that. Um, yeah, Triumph of St. Catherine is, is taller. It's the tallest model. Maybe, I haven't built the Exorcist yet, but maybe the Exorcist is a bit taller. We'll have to uh, find out for my review of the Exorcist coming soon. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, sort of size, well, that's obvious, obvious isn't it? Um, but yeah, in terms of size, you've got Triumph of St. Catherine, Juno Theruta, Celestine. But still, that's nice to see all four HQ choices uh, available uh, in the Sisters of Battle Codex, minus the missionary, um, you know, in one shot. So I, hope you, so I hope you found that size comparison helpful. Let's have a look at a couple of uh, other Imperial um, size comparisons. So there's a normal Space Marine, there's a Primaris. So they don't even come up to the you know base of the, the pulpit. Um, if we just pop her off, whee! Oh. Um, she is quite a tall one. Uh, without the base, she's definitely taller than a normal Space Marine. And a Primaris. Oh my lord. She's almost as tall as a normal Space Marine. Well, he's probably a head taller, maybe. But anyway, hope that's helped, all those size comparisons. You've now arrived at my part of the review where I will talk about all of her rules. Uh, you'll find her in the HQ section. It's not that crowded, um, especially not compared to the Elite section. But still, that's where she lives. She's a power points cost of a six and a points cost of 110. Quite decent, actually, um, when you think about it. That's not too bad, um, how much she costs. She is a named character, and of course, she's only for the Order of Our Martyred Lady. So if you're a picker, you're gonna have to have the rest of your army as a Order of Our Martyred Lady, which isn't too bad, but might look a bit odd if you've already painted your army bloody rose. Anyway. Her stat line reads, is a movement of 10 inches, weapon skill and ballistic skill of 2+, plus, strength 3, toughness 4, 7 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and a save of 3+. Plus. Very, very solid stat line. Yes, her strength is, is a bit low, but her toughness is 4, which makes her the tougher, which makes her the toughest Adeptus Sororitas that ever lived. I think the toughness only relates to the pulpit that she's in, to be fair, and so do her wounds. I mean, she's got 7 wounds, which is which is one more than Celestine, and she's technically tougher than Celestine, but let's not split hairs. 
She's a single model equipped with two heavy flamers the makes of, and the mace of castigation. You can only include one of this model in your army. So a heavy flamer works as normal, so nothing special about it, which kind of sucks. It's an eight inch range, heavy D6, strength five, AP minus one and damage one. And when resolving an attack made with this weapon, do not make a hit roll, it automatically scores a hit. And she's got two of these, so it'd be heavy 2d6 for these heavy flamers, and they're automatically going to hit. That can be pretty decent against hordes, and they are range 8 inches as well. Mace of Castigation, this is where it's at. Strength is a plus 2, so it's strength 5, AP minus 1, and damage 2. Nothing that special about that. Um, you know, the AP is minus 1. Um, it's nice that it gets damage 2, but it's, it's not the best compared to a normal Canoness's Blessed Blade, for instance, uh, which is running you at strength five, AP minus three, and a damage of D3, which statistically will get you a two most of the time. So a Blessed Blade has that chance of getting an extra bit of damage. Abilities, Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites, and Shield of Faith. So she's got that five plus and vulnerable, but further down the abilities, it does say that she's equipped with one of these Rosariuses, which uh, means that the model has a four plus and vulnerable save. She has Fiery Conviction. You can reroll hit rolls of one and wound rolls of one for attacks made by models in friendly order of armata lady units whilst their unit is within six inches of this model that's pretty good but the bubble is quite small six inches is quite small however because she's got a movement of 10 inches she is going to be able to fly around the battlefield and um buff units up although she's slower than celestine celestine has a movement of speed of 12 inches the pulpit of saint hollines or hollines uh, basilica the invulnerable save at friendly Adeptus Auratus infantry models received from the Shield of Faith ability is improved by one to a maximum of four plus whilst their unit is within six inches of this model. Again, because she's within, again, because she's a uh, movement of 10 inches, she's going to be able to buff that Shield of Faith save. So now the units that are within six inches of her can get that uh, five plus and vulnerable, uh, which is quite decent. And if they've already got um, better and vulnerable saves, like a five plus already, then you can get that four plus and vulnerable. Explodes, when this model is destroyed, roll one d6 before removing it from play. On a six, it explodes and each unit within three inches suffers one mortal wound. Keywords, Imperium, Adeptum, Adeptus Ministorum, Adeptus Sororitas, Order of Armated Lady, Character Vehicle Fly, Canoness Superior, Junith Eruta. That's all of her rules. She is good, I'll give her that. But is she double canoness good in terms of points, both power points and points cost? And that's when I'm giving, and that is when I'm equipping a canoness with a blessed blade. Well, you're not going to be able to put her in any transport, that's for sure. Um, the ten inches is quite nice in that she can whip about, pull out of combat, and um, do all those shenanigans. Maybe a couple of loop the loops. That would be pretty good with you know standing on her hands. Um, <laughs> She's got the same stat line as a Canon S, it's set for that better toughness, which is really going to help her um, absorb some of the damage coming her way. She's got more wounds, she's got the same number of attacks, um, and she has got the same save profile, both normal and invulnerable. Um, she's got a nice bubble, uh, which I think is uh, better than the abilities that a normal Canon S um, brings. You know, the Fiery Conviction is very decent, and so is the, uh, the pulpit um, bumping up that invulnerable save. Uh, the heavy flamers, I just wish that there was something extra with those heavy flamers like um, Burn the Heretic or uh, Flames of Conviction. You know my style. I don't write these rules or abilities. They obviously, Games Workshop do a fantastic uh, job and Robin does a brilliant job too. But I just feel like, like there should be something extra um, rather than it just be called the Mace of Castigation, have something, you know, I don't know, maybe she could anoint one of her sister sisters and then throughout the rest of the battle that sister performs heroic feats, you know, like she, she could anoint one of them um, to a canoness or something on the back of that pulpit or her heavy flamers could have um, like some kind of torrent rule. I would have liked to have seen those two extra things on there um, rather than just Fiery Conviction and Pulpit of St. Uh, Holine's uh, Basilica. Um, something that was more specific to the weapons that she's got rather than the abilities. But I am just nitpicking with that one. I just wanted her to be a bit more special than a flying canoness with a couple of uh, unique abilities. 
Anyway, that's just my thoughts on that. What do you guys think of the model and the rules? Please put it in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching The Emperor Protects.